Alright, what's up guys, today we're doing a video on how to dual boot Windows 10 and Kali Linux. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to open up your web browser and you want to go to this link in the description. This is to turn off fast startup, which is necessary if you're dual booting Windows with another operating system. So go to this link and scroll down until you find option 2, which is here, and you want to download the turn off fast startup.bat. So simply click download on that, wait for it to load, and then head over here where it says save, just simply save it, open the folder, right click on it, and make sure you run as administrator. Hit yes, and it will be done. Alright, so now that that's done, you can close out of that because you won't be needing that again. And the next step is to go and download the version of Kali Linux. So go to this link in the description, kali.org, and go to downloads, download Kali Linux. And then once you're on this page, you can choose the version of Kali Linux you want to install. We have the normal versions of Kali Linux up here and the light distribution versions of them. And then we also have some various um, ARM versions as well, along with various desktop uh, environments you might want to use. I recommend going for these uh, up here if you're unsure what to choose because the ARM versions will probably not work on your uh, computer. If you have a 64-bit computer, download the 64-bit version. If you have 32-bit, download the 32-bit version. I'm going to get the mate distribution in 64 bit because that's what I want to use because uh, the mate desktop environment is quite a nice one for beginners. But if you want something more lightweight, download something like LXDE. So choose the one you want to download and simply hit ISO and then choose to save the file and it will begin downloading. Alright, so after Kali Linux has finished downloading, uh, you can head over to the next link which is uh, Rufus which is used to create bootable USB sticks so you can put Kali Linux onto the USB stick and then boot from it on your computer to install it onto your hard drive. So the thing to do here will be to download Rufus from this website, which I'll link in the description. So down to download the latest version of Rufus, hit save, and then run, press yes. And then after Rufus is open, you can choose the device and partition scheme, file system type, etc. for your specific case. I have a tutorial on creating bootable USB sticks in another video, which you can watch here. And after you're done with that video, then you can continue on watching the rest of this one. So after you've created your bootable USB stick, you can close out of Rufus. And then the final step to do will be uh, in Windows, and that's to open up the start menu and type in disk mgmt.msc. Hit enter. And this will open up disk management. And then once you're in disk management, we're going to make some space to install Linux onto. You need to find your C drive. So this is my C drive here. Uh, and you want to right click it and press shrink volume. Next we need to determine how much space we want to uh, allocate for Kali Linux. For example, if you want to have a 20 gigabyte uh, install area for Kali Linux, then you need to uh, free up 20 gigabytes of space off of your C drive. The way to do this is to uh, simply open up a calculator or something and take the amount of space you want in gigabytes. So say I wanted a, a 20 gigabyte install for Kali Linux and you want to times it by 1024, uh, press equals, and that's how many megabytes you need to free up in here. So 2480. And that's how much space we're going to free up. After you've done that, press shrink and wait for it to finish. And then after that's done, we'll have 20 gigabytes of unallocated space. All right, so now that's done, you need to plug in your bootable USB stick and you need to work out a way to get your computer to boot from it. This is often in the BIOS or boot menu. When you turn on a computer, there'll be um, a message which will say something along the lines of uh, press delete to open boot menu or press F12 or F9 or something. It differs for every single computer, so it's quite hard to find. It's quite hard for me to make a tutorial on it. Uh, the best thing I can recommend is for you to Google your motherboard uh, name or your computer's name and uh, search for something along the lines of uh, computer name uh, how to boot from USB, or boot from CD, or boot menu, or something along the lines of that. But once you've got that working, you want to restart your computer, and once you've booted from the USB stick, and you've got into the Kali Linux, I will continue with the installation there. Alright, so after you've booted into the Kali Linux installer, you'll be greeted with this. From here, we want to go down and choose uh, Graphical Install, and hit Enter, and it'll begin to load up. And then after the Graphical Installer has loaded, you'll be greeted with this. Choose your language, so I'm going to choose English, and hit continue. Choose your country, I'm going to choose United Kingdom, hit continue. Uh, choose your keyboard layout, I'm using British English, hit continue. And it will load. And it will detect the uh, network um, adapters and such. 
and configure your network adapter. After that, you need to choose a host name for your computer. I'm going to choose uh, Kali VM and hit continue. And then domain name, you can leave this blank uh, for most home uses. Hit continue. And then it's time to choose a root password. Uh, for a root password, you want to ideally make it different from your main password and also make it uh, complex so somebody can't gain root access to your machine. So I'm going to type in a password here and then type in it again to verify and hit continue. And it will uh, configure the clock and the disks and such. And then here's the part where we're going to be uh, uh, setting it so it actually installs on a separate partition to Windows. Simply click on manual and click continue. And then we're going to click the free space down here and click continue. We're going to create a new partition. And then the size is going to be um, the same as your RAM or a bit bigger. So in this case, I have three gigabytes of RAM on this machine. So I'm gonna type in three gigabytes. And this is basically used to create a swap area so we can have some virtual memory, uh, which is basically required by any operating system. A good idea is to have either the same amount of RAM or 1.5 or two times more. So for me, I would either have three, 4.5 or six gigabytes. But for this example, I'm just gonna use a three gigabyte swap disk size. Hit continue and choose primary. Although you can choose either of these here. Um, uh, most hard disks, I believe, can only have four primary partitions, whereas you can have many, many more logical ones. So you can choose either one of those there. Um, it doesn't really matter in most cases. Although to be safe, uh, logical is a good choice. Hit continue. Uh, choose either of these. Beginning is often a good choice. Hit continue again. And then as the use as ext4 journaling file system, hit continue and change that to swap area. Hit continue again. And then hit done setting up the partition and hit continue. Next is to click on the free space again. Hit continue. Create new. Leave that as, uh, as big as it is. Hit continue. Choose primary or logical again. Uh, leave that as ext4 journaling file system. Leave the mount point as root. Um, that's all done, that should be all left default. Hit done setting up the partition, continue again, and then hit finish partitioning and write changes to the disk and hit continue. Yes, continue again. After that, it will begin to install Kali Linux. After it finishes copying the data to the disk, it will ask you if you want to use a network mirror. Um, often this, uh, if you have an internet connection, this is useful because it will also um, install updates to software and more software will be available. So if you can, choose yes, but for this example, I'm just going to choose no to make it quicker. After that's done, it will install the Grub bootloader on your hard drive. This is what will allow you to choose between to boot uh, into Kali or Windows 10 when you turn on your computer. It will then ask and confirm if you want to install it. Simply choose yes and click continue. And then choose the uh, hard drive which your computer boots from. So in my case, I only have one. And hit continue. And it will finish installing Grub. It will then begin to finish up the installation. And then after that, the installation will be complete. Now is a good time to remove the USB or DVD, uh, which you installed Kali Linux from, so it doesn't boot from it again when you turn on your computer, and then press continue. After it's done and the system's rebooted, you'll be greeted by this menu, which will say Kali Linux, advanced options for Kali Linux, and Windows 10. From here, you can use the arrow keys and the enter key to choose which operating system you want to boot in. Uh, if you want to boot into Windows 10, you can go down to the bottom and press enter. And if you want to boot into Kali Linux, simply go up to the top and press enter. After your computer boots up, if you're greeted by a screen like this, type in root into the login, hit enter, and then you want to type in the password you configured when you installed it. Please note that the password won't come up while you're typing it, and just hit enter. After this, you'll be greeted by the terminal. Here, you want to type in start x to start up the GUI, and hit enter. After it loads up, you'll be greeted by the desktop interface. If you go up to the top here where it says applications, there are plenty of um, penetration testing tools and such here which you would want in a OS like Kali Linux. So thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.